was a long time ago. I was very young. I was the youngest of two sons. My father was a very wealthy man. He worked hard to raise two sons. His wife had passed on, my mother. But that was a long time ago. I remember coming in from outside working in the in the fields. It was starting to rain. The weather looked much like it does right now. It was gray. The sky was gray. The workers were all gathering their tools to come in from the rain. I had come in first. But my brother, my oldest brother, my only brother, had stayed in the field to work in the field. He was different. He and I were two opposites. He was smart, he was big, he was strong. He had my father's eye. Being the firstborn, he was going to inherit twice as much as I would. And the time came to receive the inheritance after my father had died. But my father was much alive. There were who knows how many years that were left. He spent most of his time in his room reading his books, his scriptures, his scrolls that were laid out on his desk. He was a very devout man. He was very, a very righteous man. But I felt, I felt neglected. I felt like I had been cheated. Why did my father adore him so much? Because he had everything. All of God's graces, intelligence, looks, height, strength. If something needed fixing, my brother could do it. There's nothing he could not do. I, on the other hand, was not as gifted with the talents that my brother had. I don't mind working in the field, but it was, I was older, I was growing, and my mind was wandering upon the hills in the distance. I would say to myself, what's on the other side? There's got to be more to life than this. Sun up to sundown, work in the field, gather wealth for my father, that I was only going to receive a small portion. So I came in from the field to talk to my father. The thought had come to me. I could ask him now for my share of the inheritance before he died, and he would give it to me. That was a tradition. My son, you returned from the field so early. Are you not feeling well? Something troubles you. I can see it in your eyes. I can sense it with my spirit. Come, sit with me. Let us reason together. What is troubling you, my son? Please speak. I see the contentment growing daily. 
I see your eyes look toward the setting of the sun and your heart being pulled toward the city beyond the horizon. My son, the city is full of discontent. And I feel, I, f I fear that the discontentment, the tide of discontentment has flowed over the horizon into your heart. Are you not content here, my son? Are you not amply supplied? You have everything you need. Or perhaps not. There's something missing in your life. You know that when I pass on, you and your brother will inherit my wealth that I've taken a lifetime to accumulate. Like building a stone wall, one stone at a time. Come, sit with me. So I got up in a rush. I stood up and just walked right out the door with my father. I knew I could feel his eyes on the back of my head following me out the door that rainy day. It was as if God was crying, weeping. Those raindrops tasted salty on my face. So I went out, I went to my room. I stayed awake all night. I didn't know what to say. Uh, when I was in front of my father. He did a lot of the talking. I just was a loss for words. I just wanted to leave. So that night I thought of what I would say. I would go to him in the morning and ask for my share of the inheritance that would fall to me when he died. But he wasn't dead. But how I wish he was. If he were dead, I could receive my inheritance. So I will have him sign a document which would... So after a restless night, the sun finally peaked above the horizon. And I knew where I would find my father. At his desk, facing the sunrise, meditating on his scriptures. So I got up, got dressed. I had all my things packed. And I crept into his room. And there he was, as always, facing the sunrise with the window open and meditating on his scriptures. So I sat there, real quietly, until he sensed my presence, and he looked up with a start. Oh God, my father's. My son, where did you come from? You're never in here this early. There's something troubling you. Father, please sign this document. It transfers my inheritance to me. Though you're alive, it's as if you're dead. Please sign it. I must leave. I'm going crazy here. I must find out what's on the other side of that horizon. The city calls me. This is not my life. This is the life that you've given me. This is not my life. I want to run my own things. My own life, my way. Not being told where to go, where to sit, what to eat. 
what to do. I am the master of my own fate. Please, sign this document and I'll be on my way. Thank you. Goodbye, Father. My son, you know I have always done what's best for you. I provided for you, but it's obvious that you were not happy. Your joy, your joy is my concern. If this, signing this document, pleases you, then I will sign it as if I were dead to you. But know this, that I am not dead. And as long as I have breath in my lungs, while you are away, my prayers will ascend to heaven. Go with my blessings, my son. Here. Here is your inheritance. God be with you. I know he will. He has never failed me in all the years I have served him. And I pray that his hand of protection will be upon you wherever you go. Remember your God, for he will remember you as I remember you in prayer to bring you before the throne of grace. God bless you, my son. O oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, protect my son, my prodigal son. May you bring him home to me. And while he is away, may your grace go with him. Though he does not acknowledge you, I acknowledge you, God. And I lay him before you to do with as you feel, as you see fit, knowing that though he be dead to me and I to him, yet you will bring him back to me and we will be reconciled in time. Though it takes the rest of my life, I will wait. I will wait by the gate for his return. I will look unto the hills, for whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Amen. So having packed my things already and securing my inheritance, I headed out toward that city beyond the horizon. I took off through the vineyard. It was a beautiful sunny day. Fate was shining down upon me that day. I knew what I was doing was the right thing. So I caught up with the road that led into that city. And along the road, I ran into a, uh, a traveler, a young man about my age, coming back from the city and before we passed our eyes met and so we stopped and he asked me what is your business and I told him I said I'm headed for that city at the end of this road and he said I just came from there you'll love it it's great so how are you going to uh, what are you going to do when you get to that city he said I says I don't know I'll we'll find out when I get there but I do have enough money to last me a long time. And his eyes brightened. He goes, how much do you have? So I showed him. I had just received an inheritance from my father. And his eyes got brighter. So he followed me into the city. And he said, let's go. You'll, we can combine our wealth and we'll have a great time. We'll have enough money to last us the rest of our lives. So I, hum I said, well, how much do you have? And he showed me a gold coin. He says, I have more of this. I said, you do? Well, let's go. So off we went. 
to where the sun where the where the sun sets and life never ends that's what I've been told that's what he told me he said you're gonna love it you'll have so much to do there uh, you will never sleep women song I go women he goes, yeah, have you heard a woman before? I go, yeah, I dream about it. But uh, he says, you'll love it. You'll have enough money to have all the women you want. I said, well, okay, let's go.